Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Noor Hamadi, and I'm a senior art history major at the Virginia Commonwealth University in Qatar. Today, it is my honor to introduce to you our next speaker, Dr. Venetia Porter. Dr. Porter is the curator of Islamic art and contemporary Middle Eastern art collections at the British Museum, where she held the post of curator of Islamic coins in the Department of Coins and Medals. Dr. Porter studied Arabic and Islamic art at Oxford University. She obtained her PhD on medieval history and architecture of Yemen from the University of Durham in 1992. Her areas of research interest range from, but are not limited to, Islamic pottery, medieval pottery, Islamic tiles, Islamic coins, and the art and visual culture of medieval Yemen. She has also previously worked on Arabic inscriptions, um, Arabic and Persian amulets and seals at the British Museum. She has curated many exhibitions all around the world, including the British Museum's 2012 Hajj, Journey to the Heart of Islam, which explored the rituals, history, and modern manifestations of pilgrimage. Today, Dr. Porter's presentation is titled, What Does the Contemporary Art of the Middle East Tell Us About the Culture, History, and Politics of the Region Today? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in warmly welcoming Dr. Venetia Porter. Thank you very much for this lovely introduction. It's such a huge pleasure to be here amongst friends and, and colleagues and this incredible audience. Um, you'll be pleased to know that we're now on the, on the home stretch. Um, but I really want to thank um, VCU Qatar for, for really hosting this, this incredible conference and to um, good friends and colleagues, Sheila and Jonathan and to Marissa um, for all the amazing logistical really support you have spoiled us really as, as speakers. Um, but before I start my paper, I, I really want to pay a tribute to uh, a speaker you've already heard actually to, to, um, yesterday, Princess Wijdan, because she, um, none, none of us who work on the contemporary art of the, of the Middle East really could be doing anything at all without her pioneering uh, academic work. So I really want to pay a special <laughs> tribute to her. Now, my paper today uh, looks at the contemporary art um, from at contemporary art from the Middle East through a very particular prism, um, which is informed by the place in which I work, the British Museum, a museum of history. When I started working on the collection uh, back in the 1990s and building the collection, I looked for works uh, connected to Islamic art, and the obvious link was in uh, contemporary calligraphy, and Linda earlier was very generous in her warm words about the Word into Art exhibition. Thank you, Linda, so much for that. Um, what interests me particularly now is something very different, um, work that speaks of its time, and increasingly, sorry, this is what is, um, is out there. My contention is that this material is also document, that artists are finding ever more subtle and interesting ways of speaking about the worlds they inhabit, and that uh, what they do for us is to open a window onto these very complex worlds of today. And what I'd like to do in this talk is to give a snapshot of uh, some of the material that we've been acquiring at the British Museum, and um, also how sometimes we use it to engage the public. Um, I should say uh, now at the outset that I don't use any labels at all. Um, the only label I use is the nationality of the, of the artist. So I want to start with some uh, recent acquisitions of photographs, as these immediately raise the question of what is art and what is document. Uh, these are art, in inverted commas, because you can find them in art galleries, um, but the stories within them are pure politics. And um, as with Nusha, who spoke to us earlier, um, the, a lot of these, um, the, the, the artists who are producing photographs um, started out actually as photojournalists, and sometimes they combine um, the two. 
I'm starting with um, a very extraordinary work, I think, uh, called Natrin, We Are Waiting, by Leila Alawi, who is one such, was one such um, uh, photojournalist, an absolutely brilliant uh, photographer who was sadly killed in Burkina Faso in 2016. And one of her last works was photographing Syrian refugees on the Lebanese border, which is what you're seeing here. Another work um, as part of this uh, recent acquisition uh, of works um, by uh, Middle Eastern um, photographers is by Hela Amar. Uh, Hela Amar is a Tunisian artist with a PhD in law. Um, and she's, uh, she's part of a very interesting group of artists who are working uh, in Tunis. And I was recently uh, at a very extraordinary event that takes place every couple of years called Dream City, where artists uh, like Hella are very deeply engaged um, within the, the community. They're, making, uh, they're working in a public space and, uh, and, and so on. And uh, this, she's part of this very, this very interesting group of very engaged artists. And um, after the fall of Ben Ali in 2011, she was asked to investigate the state of uh, Tunisian prisons, um, about which she wrote a, a report. But she also, as an artist, uh, created a series of extraordinarily evocative images, of which um, this is one. Now, the word kunfa means convoy. And this was the way prisoners were taken from one prison to another. Um, and as she describes it, like the prisoners themselves, some, themselves, she moved through a series of prison, prisons in order to make this report, about 20 of them in all. And Hella wrote as follows about, about this work. To testify this trip, I chose to deliver in bulk images that overlap. What I saw and heard in the prisons I have, ex I have, um, I have visited exceeded all that I could have imagined. In there, I went through an intense experience um, where there was no more outside or inside nor good or bad, nor time or space, but only men and women who have lost much more than their freedom. Another uh, group that we acquired as part of this uh, acquisition supported by the Art Fund very recently um, it includes um, uh, work by uh, an Iraqi Kurdish artist called Jamal Penjouini. Um, uh, this is one of 12 that we have called Saddam is Here. This was made in 2010, and he was one of the artists to represent uh, Iraq in the Ruya Pavilion um, in 2015 at the Venice Biennale that uh, Nada was speaking um, about um, before. Now, these are a very, very interesting set of uh, images, and what he wrote about this series was as follows. They supported him, that is Saddam Hussein. They cheered for him. They beautified his cruelty, crimes, and they simply put him in power to be the godfather of Iraq. Saddam is here. Iraqi society cannot forget him, even after his death, because some of us still love him, and the rest are still afraid of him. People who love him say it's because he was handsome, powerful, and aggressive. Saddam, in the meantime, was generous and cruel. He was a good father and a criminal. His shadow is still following Iraqi society everywhere. So he created um, a series of these, these images that have become actually quite iconic now, um, and in which, as you can see, these are just ordinary people with a photograph of, uh, of Saddam. So is, this is, this, is this, this idea that, that still uh, Iraq is suffering um, from that period. Now we're going to look at more photographs uh, late, later on, but I wanted uh, now to talk about um, an artist's book we acquired um, by Iraqi artist Sadiq uh, Kweshal Fraji, uh, whose work we've seen a couple of times actually um, from uh, uh, Nada and uh, also uh, from Linda earlier. Now, like Jamal, he was uh, Penjwani, he was in the Iraq Pavilion at Venice, but in 2017. Now, Sadiq calls this book a diary. It's, um, and Nada showed us some other works uh, connected to uh, this story, which is called Ali's Boat, but that Ali's Boat started with the book. Um, it's a meditation on the nature of exile, uh, which is inspired by an encounter with his young nephew Ali, who he met on his uh, return to Baghdad for the first time in 2009, having left in 1991. You'll remember that that 1991 is the era of the first Gulf War. 
The nephew gives him a letter with a drawing with the words, I wish this boat would take me to you. And this prompted a series of musings on the effect of leaving your home. The text um, is uh, threaded through the illustrations, and you can see um, a few examples here. And it's a warning uh, that the arduousness of the journey um, and the arrival itself can easily shatter that dream, that hope of a new life. And you can see these are, these are some of the, the pages um, and some of the words. And he works in this very deliberately childlike um, way. And uh, the, the, the films that he makes are uh, basically scans of these pages and pages of text. So some of them are diaries, some of them are in individual um, drawings. And here is a, another one, um, very moving, the words, I was like you, Ali, I had a boat, it was the colour of gold in dreams, and it was studied with lapis lazuli. Um, and, and it's a very, very powerful work, um, which actually, uh, it's not really a diary, he calls it a, a diary, um, but he told me that he spent a very, very long time composing this. Now, we displayed the work in an exhibition fairly recently called um, Moving Stories, Three Journeys, where we focused um, with just of three objects um, on the complex and emotive theme of migration. Um, we juxtaposed a million-year-old story told in footsteps on a beach at a place called Happersburg in, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, I don't think that's right at all, Habsburg, whatever it is anyway, it's, it's, <laughs> it's in Norfolk, I've never been able to pronounce this word, in Norfolk, and Ali's boat, they were framed by this poetic documentary called One World in Relation, which follows uh, someone called Edouard Glissant, an inspirational poet and philosopher from Martinique. Now, along with the exhibition, Sadiq, uh, we invited him to come and do a workshop for families on, on the Saturday following the opening of this exhibition. And uh, everyone was given a little postcard, a little blank postcard, and invited to either write something or draw something um, along the theme of, uh, I wish this boat takes me to... Where would it take me to? And what was really interesting about this was uh, we'd started off thinking that it'd be something for just children, but actually all the grown-ups really engaged with it as, as well. And um, all sorts of extraordinary messages were coming out. So like, um, like this one, I wish this boat would take me somewhere with, um, without any problems. And, um, and we had, um, you, can, you can see, you know, someone even uh, drew the Kaaba there at the, at the top, and then there were um, all sorts of, places, happy places in people's minds um, that, they, that they wanted to go to. Um, I'm going to show you some, some more books. Um, I'm having a bit of an obsession about artist books um, at, the, at the moment, but, and I find that these, uh, these books actually uh, really, they touch very much on the matter of the, the substance, really, of my, of my talk, which is how do these works speak about today? And this is a, a work by uh, Hena Malala, uh, who Nada was speaking um, ab ab about early on, which is called The Conference of the Birds. And um, I'm drawn by these, uh, to these artist books because they create entire worlds within them. Um, and Hena, who uh, left uh, Iraq, I think, some 10 years ago, who's working in Bahrain, but shortly to come back um, to England, all her work references Iraq and its recent sufferings. And this book, which, con which contains um, burnt pages, it was a conservation nightmare. The conservators nearly didn't let me get, uh, acquire this work. It's full of these burnt pages. Every time you open it, you know, more flakes come out. But it's a very, very powerful work. And what she was alluding to was the burning of the libraries that took place following the Iraq War of uh, 2003. Another book that we have that I think is a, is a very powerful one is by Turkish artist Ipek Duben called uh, Refugee. And, it, and what she was looking at was really this worldwide forced migration um, during the last decade. This was even before um, Syria she was making this. And these 10 images are uh, very, uh, with childlike sim simplicity, they, these are images which are printed on gauze um, and with this 
embroidery of text, so that just the material of it um, belies the, the strength of um, what, what it is that she's actually saying. They're very beautiful and delicate, but with these very powerful um, messages. Um, so this is a French-Algerian artist, Abdallah Benanteur, who's inspired by Mahmoud Darwish. That Mahmoud Darwish, as I'm sure many of you know, Palestinian poet who is often regarded as the voice of the Palestinian people. And this is a very beautiful um, unbound book, Birds Die in Galilee. And these are the last words um, from the from the, from the poem, and um, the individual um, pages are covered with, uh, with, with these um, sort of imprinted designs of birds, and they pull out, and you can create, make actually a sculpture um, out of it, which you can with so many of these artist books. So uh, this is one by, by Dia Azawi, who actually, we could say, has really pioneered the form of the artist um, book in a, in, a, in a sense for Iraqi artists in, in in, in particular, Anada, who I keep referring to because she's like the godmother of all this material here, um, is, uh, is, uh, has worked a lot on, on these Iraqi um, artist books. And uh, I displayed this um, recently in a small exhibition, and I didn't know how to display it because you can open it out till it's sort of this big, but then I, I turned it, managed to turn it into, into a kind of sculpture. So this is a work we've already heard, heard about. Um, this is a, a, a photo book. This was, uh, again, acquired very recently as part of this uh, art fund acquisition and is by uh, Nusha Tavakolian. I saw this book, which opens out in this incredible concertina way, at an exhibition at the Prince Klaus Museum and Center, where uh, Nusha had won an award and was absolutely fascinated by it. As we've heard this morning, it was um, called Blank Pages. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it starts as these, these um, it's the idea of the uh, albums uh, that belong to individuals, and um, then their story, in a sense, is kind of made up later because these, uh, because the, the the photo albums remain blank for, for a lot of the time. Um, and so what's extraordinary about them is that they are stories of every day, very poignant um, in, indeed. And um, so as she talks about them, these uh, expanded albums, they subvert the, the dreams of uh, an idyllic childhood by injecting reality um, into it. And finally, before I leave the subject of artists' books, um, uh, although this isn't contemporary, this is a modern work, sorry, this is a modernist work, um, I couldn't resist showing you this because this is a, um, this is a recent acquisition. And this is a book uh, by Lebanese artist Shafi Aboud, who is uh, really the first Middle Eastern artist to work with the book, the Livre d'Artiste, which is what it is, um, and where the tradition comes from. And this book was made in 1953, so very, very uh, early for these books, and it's a gloriously macabre story, which has roots in a folk tale um, from the mountains of Lebanon. Um, and it's, it's actually, can I turned out, it turned out by sort of amazing serendipity that one of my very close colleagues um, in the British Museum, it turns out that uh, she comes from the same village um, where this story was being constantly told. Um, and uh, and it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, about, it's about a priest um, who uh, is really awful and he mistreats these two brothers, one of whom is called Helu, sweet, and the other is called Mur. And basically he's so horrible that he, um, he, uh, he, he, uh, he threatens Helu with, if you don't behave and do what I tell you, I'm going to cut pieces of your forehead and turn them into soles for my shoes, which is what he does, which is you can, this is what you can see, this poor guy here. Look, um, and then anyway, the priest um, has his uh, comeuppance, his wife is chucked into the river there, and then he um, there, look, it's done to him, so um, those, I think, as part of the story, the souls then go back onto Helu's forehead, but it's, anyway, it's a most completely bizarre, macabre story, um, but it is, is absolutely wonderful, and speaks of its time in an in a interesting, in interesting way, very connected to these mountains of Lebanon. 
Um, now I'm going to talk about something else, which is uh, really to look at contemporary art of uh, relating to Syria. And what I'm going to show you are works that, in, that are in a current display called Living Histories um, at, at the museum. And I've been trying to acquire works by Syrian artists, and I was particularly inspired by um, a book called uh, Syria Speaks here by Malou Halassa, a book that she edited, in which she focused on um, work that was being made uh, in Syria, out of Syria, um, in response to the uprisings. Now, there's quite a funny story connected to this, which is, which is uh, this. So, um, so it turned out that, um, that there's this young woman, uh, Faiza Shaheen, who's actually a mental health worker who helps to prevent, um, tries to prevent uh, radicalization. Uh, she was returning home from honeymoon uh, in Turkey on the 3rd of August 2016 when she was reported to the authorities by Thompson Airways cabin crew who were concerned about the book that she was reading. Um, which is an art book. Um, and as a result, she was questioned in a room along with her husband um, for quite a long time at Doncaster Airport under the Schedule 7 of the Terrorist Act. So this really shows you the kind of crazy world in which um, we, are, we are living. Now, um, in um, Malou's book, she published uh, a group of very extraordinary posters, first shown at the Prince Fa Klaus Fund Gallery. And these posters, um, of which this is an example here, um, these posters were made by um, a Syrian uh, art collective called The Syrian People Know Their Way. And um, we don't know who the individu individuals are. They are, they are this uh, collective. This is the display in which it was in. It's just on for another um, few weeks. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple more images from, from them. Um, and what is, what is interesting about them is that these posters were circulating um, on Facebook. And uh, so this is from the beginnings of the uprising. So this is, they were produced between 2011 and 2014 circulated on, on, uh, on, on Facebook. They were printed out to go on demonstrations. So somebody in Damascus would send the file to somebody you know, in another, in another place in, in Syria. They'd be printed out, and it sort of depended on what kind of printer you had. So if you had an A3, it would be printed out big. If you had an A4, or if you had color, it'd be printed you know, in, a, in, a di in a different way. Um, and uh, so, so um, these, these posters were digital in form, made, made by this anonymous co collective. And through Malu, um, because we don't collect di digital art like this, um, we were able to print these out on beautiful archive paper. So we have about 60 um, of, these, um, of these posters. And uh, what's interesting about them is that they were made at a time at the start of the uprisings when there was kind of hope that things would change and so on. So the messages are incredibly bold. They would, will refer in some cases to um, specific events. So this is, uh, this is the, the, um, the, the, the ghastly... Um, uh, Baba Amr uh, uh, mass massacre uh, that took place uh, somewhere near near Homs, and um, so that was one of it's that kind of real milestone of um, of, of horror. And these uh, these these posters are really um, extraordinarily interesting, um, and in terms of the imagery and the messages um, that have been written um, on them. Another artist who, uh, whose work is displayed in this Living Histories, this one here, um, is by Sulafa Hijazi, who's a film animator and works in digital art, lives in Germany um, now. So uh, these were absolutely ex extraordinary images, so all um, made digitally, but with these very stark um, images that you, you can see, the, the masbaha there made out of skulls, um, and the sewing machine there, and this bridal figure, um, the, the two, the bride and groom. You actually don't need to say anything about this work at all. Very powerful in, indeed. And one of the interesting things uh, that we did as part of the um, as part of this small exhibition was um, we do a lot of testing of our audiences. 
um, it, at, the, at the British Museum. We're very keen to know what people think about the displays. And because this one was quite political, we, um, we, asked, um, we asked people, we had, we had some young students who came and were asking a lot of questions. And, and um, people were really, really moved by these. And we were asking them, you know, is this the kind of material the British Museum should be collecting? Um, and, uh, and, uh, and a lot of people were saying, absolutely, it is, because it makes us think about what's going on in a very different way, because there's so much that we see in the newspapers, and I'll show you something quite moving at the, at the end of this sequence here, um, that uh, we sort of don't notice it anymore. But by looking, um, this is what we wanted people to say, that by looking at art, it actually makes makes you think about what's, um, what's going on. Uh, so an, another series, more photographs again through the art fund, was Jabir Lazmi, uh, who's a Syrian who lives in Qatar now. This, so this is a series that he did, the Resurrection series. And the project began um, as a what he called artistic documentation. So this was when the uprising was really um, at the peak of what he just how he described it as civil society activism. Um, and so he um, portrayed a number of different individuals who were all quite well known. Um, and so this is uh, this is uh, Alma and Tabli, um, uh, the mask, let the masks fall. And uh, this, is a, this is a fashion designer. It turns out that he makes a lot of Beyonce's garments. Uh, and uh, uh, Rami Ali. And the, the texts are actually terribly interesting. So what, he, what Jabal Hazmi asked them to do was to take the Al Ba'ath newspaper and to turn it upside down and, and either write something on it or make some kind of symbol. So this one, from one day to the next, we cut, um, yeah. And so it's a play on this kind of um, Arabic. And it's a little bit like the expression, we reap, you reap what you sow, but it's the different, the different sow. And so the portraits were made, um, they were made secretly, uh, quickly, and when he was in Syria, and then he made more of them um, when he left the, the country. And this is a portrait um, of a very well-known artist, Syrian artist, uh, Yusuf, um, Yusuf, uh, uh, Yusuf Abdelki. And he was a very, uh, is a very important uh, Syrian modernist, actually. Uh, he, he was a cartoonist. He fell out with the previous um, Assad regime. And um, this is work that he, on the right here, the sardine, as he calls it, this is work that he's been doing recently. He used to do uh, works with a lot of colors. I'm going to show you um, one or two in a, in a moment. Uh, uh, but, you know, great big portraits, uh, quite strange pictures. But since the uprisings, he's gone completely into grisaille and uh, doing works which are still lives. And, and when I saw this work, I, I completely, I found it terribly moving and beautiful um, as, a, as something that kind of, in a sense, symbolized um, Syrian people being completely um, trapped. So this is some of his previous work. So we have two of these on the, on the left. Um, he calls personage. There's whole, always this series of figures, dark, sinister figures. And that's one of his very um, early uh, cartoons there. So at the same time um, as this, uh, this display, um, I asked a Syrian artist, Aysam Kurbaj, who left Syria actually quite a long time ago, uh, if he would like to do something in connection with this display. Um, and what was fascinating to me, and this is the only time I'm going to use the Islamic word, um, and that is that he came into our gallery and he fell in love with these two wasters. And Jonathan and, and I share a passion for, um, for this pottery from northern Syria known as Raqqa ware. And these are wasters of Raqqa ware um, from the sort of 12th, early 13th century. And they come from a site in Aleppo. And they're wasters because they fell apart in the kiln. Something went wrong in the, in, in the kiln. And so he took these um, as a, a starting point. It's quite difficult to see that's the, the case there in the middle of our Islamic gallery. Um, and he then um, juxtaposed them with some other absolutely extraordinary works that he had made. And these are uh, little boats that he, he made out of um, the bicycle, the mudguard of a bicycle. 
um, and um, he put burnt matches in them. So, as you can obviously imagine, this is this is about um, people leaving Syria in boats, dying, and and so on. Um, and he worked with a, this poet called Ruth Padell, um, and so that um, that's part of a poem that goes uh, with that. This is a detail of one of these. Uh, Boats and uh, and actually it's uh, really lovely because he's uh, been this particular work was taken straight from uh, this gallery to uh, an exhibition which is called Living with Gods which has just opened um, at the at the British Museum. What he also did as part of this was that he made um, these kind of garments which are like which are like gravestones um, which are uh, symbolising these these poor children who died um, off the coast there. And so he writes the words majhul, um, unknown, um, so both in Greek and in Arabic, and the, the dates and, and so on. So I want to look at a couple of other things now. I've become very interested in how artists might look at particular conflict. And in the case of Lebanon, we have about 10 artists in the collection whose work is concerned in one way or another with the Lebanese civil war. Um, and it interests me that, that each of these artists uh, are looking at it from a different perspective and taking something out of it which connects to them. And they're from different generations. Some were, some lived through it, some were children, um, some uh, were not even there. Uh, and um, the first one of these is um, a series, although we mostly buy works on paper, occasionally I'm able to branch out into something like pottery, which is rather amazing. Um, one of a series of very, very interesting vases, porcelain vases made in China at the potteries of Jingzhijian um, by Raid Yassin, who's both a musician and an artist. And this won the um, Abraj Prize in uh, Dubai a few, few years ago. And he calls it the Yassin Dynasty. And what he, um, what he did was that he took uh, seven key moments in the Lebanese Civil War that for him kind of changed things or were so, uh, so important that they had a kind of dramatic um, effect um, on, on different outcomes of the, the, the Civil War. And he, um, so with, with, the, with this one, um, it's, um, this is called the Mountain War, and this was a conflict in Mount Lebanon's uh, Shouf and Ale regions between the Christians and the Druze, uh, two communities who played an integral role in the formation of modern Lebanon. So when you, it's very tricky, this piece, because when you look at it, first of all, what you see are, you know, Chinese cloud scrolls and, you know, all, all of this, but actually then you see that there is a battle taking place um, in, in there. So the way he the way he worked was uh, he would work with graphic artists in in Beirut who would uh, create uh, these kinds of designs um, of according to what he was asking them to to do and then they were transferred um, I haven't got the pictures here to show you but they were transferred um, in the potteries of Jing Jingzhijian um, and made um, these these pots. Here and they um, they actually come in these big uh, boxes in the same way that Chinese porcelain would have would have travelled um, as as well. So this is another artist, uh, Laura Reyeb, from a completely different uh, generation. She lived through the uh, Lebanese Civil War. She's not only an artist, but she's also a poet and a journalist. And what she, uh, so within, within this, I'm going to show you a couple of details in a, in a second. These two figures are um, absolutely extraordinary detailed um, you can see it's a mountain village and people and and so on and here uh, there's the text which uh, which relates to it which I haven't um, found the time yet to actually go through and read the entire text because it's all buried within within all of that but it's uh, it it talks about a Christmas in 1984 right in the heart of the Lebanese Civil War which started as many of you know 1976 ended in 1990. Then uh, two 
two artists, two other artists, Khalil Jurej and Joanna Hadji Thomas, a very different uh, perspective on the Lebanese civil war, and that is through its victims. And so these, and I'm going to show you a couple more details, um, are um, posters which, uh, well, they're like post, they're of posters, um, which, which uh, when people die uh, all over the Middle East and in, indeed actually across the Mediterranean, you put pictures up with a, with a black frame um, a, around it. And so this is a text about it. So they, they went and um, found these, these images across uh, Beirut and they would photograph them. They were particularly fascinated by the way they deteriorated because they do, their paper deteriorated over time. So they then um, started to take some of these and draw um, on them um, as well. And they're really very, um, they're very, very powerful works. So here are two more from this series. So there are 44 um, in all. And what's really interesting is that there's another Lebanese uh, artist. He's a Lebanese-American artist, lives in uh, New York, who's called John Gerage. It turns out that they're cousins um, and kind of vaguely knew they came from the same village, of course, as everybody does. Uh, and, uh, and so John, had, John Gerage had never lived in Lebanon. His uh, parents left, I think, before he was even born. Um, and yet all the references are to Lebanon. And so what he did was the, the, the pictures, the posters are not of the martyrs, but they're of the perpetrators. So, so for him, and I'm sure you'll recognize some of them, these were all the people who, in his view, were like the puppeteers and who were fueling the Lebanese civil war, whether it was the leaders of the militias within Lebanon or whether it was all the politicians in, in in, uh, you know, locally or you know, as far away, um, and this this detailed one is uh, Abdel Halim Khadam, Khadam, who is, I think, deputy um, uh, prime minister in in Syria. So he prints these on vellum, um, and they uh, and then burns holes um, through their eyes, as you can see here. So I'm going to look at uh, another artist now, Malal uh, Duehan. Uh, Linda showed us some, um, some, some work that she has by Manal uh, in, uh, in, at LACMA. And she's been described in, in uh, newspapers as one of Saudi's uh, fearless female artists. And she has now a very large body of work, much of which is very socially engaged, often looking at issues to do with, um, Saudi, with women in Saudi Arabia. Now, these two that we, we just um, acquired here, standing and pecking doves, are part of, from a, a part of um, a huge series that she did called Suspended Together, uh, which had a lot of these doves flying or sitting and so on, um, which was, there were about 200 of them all together. And the whole the whole installation gave this impression of movement and freedom. Um, but actually, when you looked closer at these, you realize that they're, they're frozen. Um, and if you look even more closely, you'll see they have this, this stamp on them. Um, and what these are are the permission documents that allow uh, Saudi women to travel. Um, so notwithstanding their circumstances, all Saudi women um, are required to have this document. I have a feeling the law may have either changed or be in the process of changing. But in any case, if it has changed, then, then these are works that speak of their time and moment um, of, of uh, history. Now, another work that we acquired um, from her was a very interesting work um, of uh, about 30 photographs, which was called If I Forget You, Don't Forget Me. And it's a work that goes to the heart of who she is and where she was brought up. And that's in the province of Dahran, as her father worked in the Aramco oil industry. And it's an extraordinarily interesting work. You could almost call it an ethnographic study, really. She wanted to capture the memories of people working in that industry, many of whom she'd known all of her life. So she set about interviewing them and photographing them either in their homes or their places of work and putting 
photographs together to capture something of that spirit. Um, and she says, in this series, I pursued stories within people's objects and created a portrait of what they um, chose to keep. So this is starting with her, with her father here. And this is somebody called Nasser there. Um, this is a, this is a, a woman um, who is a real pi pioneer. Um, and these are accompanied by, I'm not going to show you the vi video, just a couple of stills of, from them, because she, she, um, she then she did these interviews, she took photographs, and, the, and she recorded uh, some of the, the, the people. And their stories are absolutely fascinating. So, uh, so Hamad al Jurefani talks about how uh, his father was a was a trader and had camels, and you know he'd go off for months and months on on end across the desert and ending up in the Gulf. And they'd they'd uh, occasionally they'd meet a traveller who'd heard about his father, and you know very extraordinary story. You know, no education in the in the family, and he Hamad um, then uh, is it happened with a Ram. As, I, as I've learned, that they wanted to, uh, they wanted to have local people who, who who they could actually bring into the industry um, and train them and so on. And so they would send them off to um, to America to study. And he's absolutely hilarious about about going uh, to America. They went in a in a plane um, for the first first time in a plane, and that's and he went with a group of friends, and that's the the, the picture. Sorry, this has died now. I think anyway, that's the picture um, of him and his and his friends, um, and uh, and he then actually rose to be extremely senior um, within within Aramco. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you, um, which is going to come with a, with the, just a couple of minutes of video at the end, is about a, a, a new exhibition coming up, opening actually uh, this coming week, which only has four objects in it. Um, and it's in the same place that we showed um, the Sadiq al Fraji Ali's, Ali's boat in the exhibition Moving Journeys. Um, and this is a very interesting space. It's a small space. It's right at the entrance of the British Museum on the, on the right. Um, and it's where as curators were able to sort of ex experiment in a sense and where you can really powerfully tell a story with just very few objects and um, the the uh, the exhibition is called on violence and beauty reflections on war and it started um, with the acquisition of this very interesting uh, digital art piece uh, by uh, by uh, Farid El Ashai, who died in 2013. This was actually her last work. Now, she's a very interesting artist. She was a, a painter. Um, she was a translator of Bertolt Brecht. Uh, she was an activist, spent a lot of time in Qasr prison. She lived through the Iranian Revolution, through the Iran-Iraq War. And the work that she made is a play on the Goya disasters of war, which is this magisterial work um, created by Goya in response to the horrors of the Peninsular War that raged in Spain for six years from 1808. Um, and uh, actually, these, these etchings were not printed um, till long after they were, they were produced. And this, this, th at the same time as Goya was making these very famous set-piece paintings, he was also making these drawings, these sketches um, that ended up with the, the 82 or 83 um, etchings that make up uh, the disasters of war. And it's often described as the first guerrilla war. And it's been hugely iconic in terms of the numbers of artists who actually have identified with it. I mean, even somebody like Don McCullen, the famous ph photographer of the Vietnam War, actually refers to Goya in this, in this way. Now, Lachai was very drawn to this work, and she started working on it on, in 2011. And essentially, what it is, is this. So she, um, she uh, working with a, with a, t a team of, uh, of people, um, but particularly uh, Yashar uh, Samimi Mufakham Muf Muf and uh, Tarlan Rafi. Um, and what they did was they took out the, um, the images of the Goya disasters, um, and they 
uh, they then, as it were, this is not the right terminology, but they then scooped them up into a video, which, um, as I'll show you in a minute, because we'll play it, uh, then got, gets projected onto the empties, as we call them, and every time they go onto the little square, um, the figures that were once in them come um, alive. It's a very, very powerful and mesmerizing work. Now, um, you see it here in the Prado Museum. And what was absolutely extraordinary was to have this work in the Prado M Museum. So the first Middle Eastern artist uh, there, um, and it was the invited work. It's, it's the, the director of the Prado Museum likes to do these interventions um, in, in, uh, in, in galleries. And so it, from there, in the British Museum, um, sorry, so this is actually, this is the, the, to, just to show you what she did. So this is the Goya here, and then she took away the figures, but actually reworked the, 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 the background. And so we've juxtaposed it in this, in this exhibition with three ancient works of a completely different kind. So you have um, what is the, the oldest um, uh, work here, the battlefield palette. Uh, this is a battle between the Assyrians and the kingdom of Elam. Um, this is Achilles killing uh, Penthesilea. And it's a terrible story, really, because you know they, they fight and then their eyes meet and they fall in love a bit too late. Um, so, uh, <laughs> and um, anyway, so these have been juxtaposed with um, with the, with the, the the work that um, now in my last couple of minutes I'm going to show you, um, Andrew. Will you? Ah, there we go. It's actually accompanied by a Chopin nocturne, but I didn't feel you needed the music as well. I think we can stop it there. Thank you. So I, I hope that what I've been able to show you is um, is really how um, works by Middle Eastern artists are really so engaged. Uh, look at this modern world, as I mentioned at the beginning, in such incredibly interesting ways. And I, I do, as a, as a museum curator, and you know, what we do is our job is to make things accessible to the public, to hope that the public can learn from the things that they see. Um, that I hope that, that, uh, that, that really that you, you feel that, that these kinds of works um, really are uh, they contribute, in a sense, not to say they're the only thing, um, but that in the future, people will, uh, when they want to study what's been going on in these recent decades, you know, they'll read, uh, you know, all the political histories and, and that, but that um, I hope they will also look at the art. Thank you very much.